Gershwin is one of the few composers like Chopin, Beethoven, who has a universal appeal. I think that that's down to a few reasons. First of all, there's a, some kind of harmonic logic there. It just it just proceeds and progresses with such a such a sense of inevitability. Every melody. I also feel that Gershwin is the composer of the 20th century because, in many senses, he represents the conflicting cultures and the 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 uh, post-industrialist uh, emergence of uh, Western society and all of those those different elements, the old country, Europe, meeting the new country, um, Latin America, and of course, African America, they're all encapsulated and brought together in a unique melting pot by George. Gershwin is a very interesting composer because he's not a jazz composer. He's American classical music, whatever that means. And yet, the blues being the you know indigenous music of America is so, so much in every sentence and every phrase and every motif that jazz musicians you know, the world over adore Gershwin and they obviously improvise over Gershwin. So I would have considered it remiss. I mean, not to play my own take on Gershwin. That involves improvisation. I've got an orchestra here at my disposal and I should use it. I am thrilled to be joined by two marvelous musicians on this album. First of all, James Morrison. James is somebody who I've looked up to for many years and he's a, an incredible multi-instrumentalist, needs no introduction. In fact, that phrase is a bit of a chestnut, but James truly needs no introduction. There's not many instruments he can't play very well. And uh, I thought with James it would be really beautiful to do something a little different than what you know you often hear James is you know, such an incredible virtuoso. I thought it'd be really beautiful for him to bring his flugelhorn and to simply play over me in melody number 17 and it sort of evoked that real sort of almost Duke Ellington um, African-American brass band sound and it worked exactly as I had hoped. We're also playing a nice work if you can get it and that's more of a, a jazz feel and he also used his flugel for that and whenever I hear the flugel I think of this slightly plaintive haunting sound and yeah what a master. Sarah McKenzie I had never met Sarah. We turned up here, Eugene Goosen's Hall, said hello, and went straight into it. I was a little tentative, but that disappeared after the first phrase. Somehow, in this, uh, this young 25-year-old singer is black jazz. It just comes out. There's depth. There's uh, a sense of, uh, of knowledge beyond her years. We had an immediate rapport, and uh, it's been said, and it's true, that a classical pianist can learn more from conductors and singers than anyone else. And boy, that was a learning experience. I um, think that this is the best I've ever played in a recording studio. I think it's the best we've ever worked together. I think that uh, it was just a beautiful synthesis of uh, intellect and emotion. And uh, it's funny, Gershwin Take Two is sort of Gershwin the benchmark for me. And <laughs> so, I guess that's good in a way, but take two is uh, also a little bit of an ambiguous tune because I'm so happy with it. That's it. Exactly. That was the one. <laughs> well done.